What's up guys, Jared here, and what I have in my hands is the Mizu MX4. Now, Mizu is another one of Chinese few high quality smartphone manufacturers, and guess what? Just like Xiaomi, Mizu has their own interesting twist on Android, but more on that in a minute. Now, the MX4 adds to the latest trend of phones featuring metal with an aluminum frame and matching buttons. However, the back cover is still plastic, but at least it's a matte grayish color instead of glossy. The edges are slightly chamfered, and sure, holding it in the hand is ergonomically comfortable due to the rounded edges, but as a result, feels less true in the hand, as if I might drop it, for example. The display is unusually pleasant. Um, I say that because most smartphones feature an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, but Meizu used an unusual 5 by 3 ratio with a resolution of 1920 by 1152, which gives us a PPI of 418. So not quite a quad HD resolution, but could still be considered 2K, I think. Colors look great in pretty much every aspect, uh, no color banding at all, good black and white saturation, great black contrast, but suffers just slightly with white. And overall, color saturation could use a little work. And that's all fine and everything, but but because of that strange aspect ratio and resolution, we miss out on things like 1080p YouTube playback, for example. Now, as you can see, I'm limited to 720p here, whereas with a 1080p display like the one featured on the new Moto X, because it's a normal aspect ratio and resolution, it's able to support the full 1080p resolution playback. But you know what's weird? Even though it's only playing back at 720p, I honestly have a hard time telling the resolution difference when watching the same video on both displays simultaneously. And I'm really not sure what to think of that. And by the way, if you do watch video or listen to music for that matter, the little speaker they place at the bottom of the phone is actually pretty damn impressive. Uh, for the first time in a Chinese branded phone since the Oppo Find 7, at least in my opinion, the sound isn't tinny, but instead actually quite rich in deep tones and can get pretty damn loud too. So I gotta hand it to Meizu for that one. So the MX4 runs Meizu's own take on Android and it's called Fly Me OS and it's totally different than anything I've ever seen before. Uh, and for an Android device, it feels restricted and partly because Meizu tried to remove as much Google as possible. I even had to find a special APK file to download and install just to get access to the Google Play services. And by the way, I'll leave a link in the description for that file below. But also because of the little things throughout the phone, like accessing the settings menu, where on most Android devices, you can simply jump into the settings via the notification pull-down or quick settings. But with the MX4, there's no settings button in the pull-down screen. And instead, you have to use the settings app, which lives on the home screen, which is actually similar to Xiaomi's MIUI firmware uh, in that it has no app drawer. <laughs> so everything's scattered across your screen unless you organize everything into folders, which while some people may prefer, I'm just not really one of them. But aside from little annoyances like that every now and then, it's actually a pretty nice and simplistic UI to operate and does have some nice visual appeal to it as well. There really isn't much going on behind the scenes. Uh, venturing into the settings, it looks more complicated than it really is thanks to its strange take on what looks to me like early paranoid Android in tablet mode, uh, where all of your settings are labeled in tabs on the side and selecting each tab reveals its respective settings on the right. Uh, it's different, and again, some people might like it, but I'm not one of them. Uh, and remember earlier when I said it was simplistic, I wasn't joking, there truly isn't any software gimmicks in this phone. Uh, I mean, it does have this pretty cool useful screen off gesture list, which isn't anything new, but since they placed the bloody power button at the top like HTC does, which by the way, I hate, uh, the gestures make it way easier to turn the screen on and off. But as you go through the UI, you'll notice that they've done something strange with the navigation buttons. It's sort of a mix between the dedicated capacitive circular home button and on screen buttons. Uh, I suppose you could say it gets the job done, but to me it's just strange strange and takes quite a bit of getting used to. Again, this is one of those things that some people are either going to love or hate. I really have no complaints when it comes to the overall performance, and that's probably thanks to its octa-core MediaTek MT6595, which, if I remember correctly, is MediaTek's latest and greatest CPU, and features two quad-core processors, one running at 2.2 GHz and the other at 1.7. And along with 2 GB of RAM and the PowerVR G6200 GPU, my experience has been pretty smooth. I would have preferred animations to be a little faster, which normally wouldn't be an issue because on most phones I can simply jump into the developer options and scale up the speeds, but this phone doesn't have the same kind of developer options most Android phones have, and unfortunately, as far as I can tell, there's no way to access the settings I need. Either way, taking a look at the benchmark results reveals some pleasing numbers. Uh, and although high scores don't always dictate good performance, I'd say that the MX4 has good to 
great performance and that's just in balance mode so switch it to performance mode and benchmark scores get even higher though I didn't see much point in using performance mode because there wasn't really any situations where I felt it was needed so instead I decided to save battery life and leave it in balanced mode and that's actually where the MX4's good performance ends because battery performance was pretty damn bad uh, from a hundred to fourteen percent I only managed to rankle just under two and a half hours of screen on time which is pretty piss poor for a 3100 milliamp hour battery which by the way is non-removable and that actually leads me to believe that it's got to be something with the coding some sort of bug or wake lock because since the ui and settings are so basic and there really isn't anything going on behind the scenes Technically, we should be seeing great battery performance instead of what I was able to get. So hopefully a future software update will address that. And finally, the MX4 features a two megapixel front selfie cam. The main rear camera though is an impressive 20.7 megapixel from Sony. But for some reason, I just wasn't blown away impressed with the pictures it produced. But they aren't bad by any means, but the light metering can be way off sometimes, which can result in pictures being blown out or overexposed, and some extremely underexposed. Feature-wise, it's got a pretty nice assortment of shooting modes, including manual mode with shutter speed, ISO exposure, and manual focus settings. And there's even a little level guide situated around the shutter button to help set up shots which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, the camera is also capable of recording video at 4K, like most are these days, and has a slow motion video setting at 720p. And while I mentioned that pictures taken don't blow me away, I was impressed by its low light capabilities, and I'd say, what, maybe 90% of the phones I've reviewed all pretty much perform the same in low light, which is shit, by the way. Uh, the MX4 actually does a great job at not blurring the crap out of low light pictures being taken, or dirty them up too bad with low light grain and noise. So good low light performance is another one I gotta hand to Mizu. At the end of the day, Mizu is a newer device manufacturer and is certainly trying to make a name for itself with its high end hardware offerings, but I think that its shortcoming is with its Fly Me OS software because while it's a different and interesting take on Android, I just don't think that all the strange little added touches are something that the masses, including myself, We'll warm up to. But on the flip side, for a sub $500 phone with an octa-core processor, a decent display, good camera, and a high capacity battery that has terrible performance at the moment, with the hope of software updates to improve upon that, I think it's a phone worth considering, especially if you're in the market for a higher quality Chinese phone. Personally though, if I was to choose between the Xiaomi Mi 4 and the Mizu MX4, I'd go with the Xiaomi Mi 4 in a heartbeat. That said, if you'd like to know why, hit the like button and let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do a comparison video between the two phones. So what do you guys think of Mizu and the MX4? Uh, what do you think of the software? Let me know in the comments below and hey, if you wanted to pick one of these up for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for you as well as a discount code from pandawill.com for $30 off, which will expire in 30 days. So if you wanted to get one, now is probably the best time. But that's it for this one. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time stopping by, maybe even hit the subscribe button to be notified of all of my future videos. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.